Hi, I'm Tim Wagner, and I'm here with another Writing in the Dark video. Had a new book come out this week from Flame Tree Press. It's called Your Turn to Suffer. See if I can get it there so the camera can look at it. Another kind of weird, surreal, dark uh, horror novel kind of stuff I usually write. Uh, one of the things that always interests me whenever I see reviews of my work is how people perceive it differently than I do. A lot of people seem to think this one's darker, and uh, the word brutal shows up in a number of reviews. Um, and some people say it flirts with Splatterpunk, too, so I thought this would be a good time to talk about um, extreme horror and my thoughts on writing extreme horror, the advice I got to give on it. First of all, you know, when we talk about extreme horror, we're talking about most people usually think of extreme elements in terms of sex and violence. Um, the violence itself may be um, not off stage, really, I mean, and it may be prolonged. Uh, you know, horror movies that have a lot of gore in them might be considered extreme horror, but not if it's for fun. Like it's it's like a, you know, a carnival spook house ride. Yeah, there's blood squirting and things like that, but you're not supposed to take it seriously. It's almost humorous. Um, so something like, you know, Friday the 13th movies or Hatchet movies, they're, they're just meant to be fun in a spook house kind of way. But uh, movies that are things like Hostel or Martyrs, um, where there is the, the, the extremeness of the horror is affects the characters and us in very profound ways. So it's not meant to be fun. Um, in some ways, it feels almost like an endurance test. Um, so the, you know, when I say extreme horror, I'm talking about the latter kind. Although some of the stuff I'm talking about could apply to just, you know, fun gore horror too. So first of all, like with any kind of fiction, character is most important. So if you're going to have extreme horror fiction and some really awful things are happening to your characters, um, they should be characters people get a chance to know before bad things happen to them. Uh, characters that we can sympathize with, um, even if we just sympathize with the experience that they're going through. They shouldn't be cardboard cutouts who exist just to get mowed down by whatever malevolent force is going on in your stories. So you want to go ahead and, you know, make your characters, even the minor ones, uh, who may <laughs> drop like flies in your story if there's a lot of death in it, um, you want to make sure that they still have, an, they're developed enough so they each have kind of their moment in the sun before they're gone and that we can care about them uh, because of what happens to them. Um, that we don't necessarily luxuriate in the horrible things that happen to them. Um, although Alfred Hitchcock used to like to make the audience complicit in what the uh, bad things the character was doing. Make us want them to get away with it, to kind of play with our own sense of morality and stuff. So, I mean, there's some of that you can do too by having a, a pretty awful character be dispatched along the way in a pretty terrible manner. But even then, you know, the character itself, we may not sympathize with them, but we've gotten to know that character. They're still not a cardboard cutout. So when you write scenes of extreme horror, even if your whole story is not one, uh, uh, an extreme horror story, the character's experience is more important than what's happening to them. You don't want to imagine it, and this is true for any fiction, but you don't want to imagine it like you're watching it on a screen and describing what's happening to the character. You want to write it from the inside out. What is the character experiencing when this awful thing is happening to him or her? What kind of mental, physical, and emotional reactions are they having? Um, you don't really need to describe a whole lot of, of gory detail if you're writing from inside a person. Um, and that's the most important thing you can probably do. Otherwise, it's just going to be descriptions of blood and you know, limbs are being hacked off or whatever, and nobody's going to give a damn. Uh, so in kind of following on that, less is more. I mean, you can go on and on and on in your description of gore, uh, thinking that you're being, you know, very, very edgy for, and, uh, you know, just really, really being, you know, artistically extreme. And it's been done before. You're not. Um, you want to balance it. I mean, you can go ahead and make people imagine a lot worse gore than you actually show. Um, like if you've got a character that has to, uh, like in the original Saw movie, maybe somebody's got to, you know, saw off one of their hands or something. Um, if you have show them, you know, working toward it, working toward it, working toward it, and then beginning to saw, you know, in terms of how difficult it is to do and the initial pain and the initial blood, and it's really hard to keep going. So they hesitate, hesitate, kind of work up the courage somehow, and then they start it. You don't have to finish a show 
every little saw, every little motion of the saw as they go through. Uh, the, the, the emotional part they've gone through. So you could show the aftermath then that, uh, when the hand is off and they're trying to stem the blood flow or something. Um, the in-between part is not as intense once they've gone through that working themselves up to do it. So uh, like a lot of things, sometimes less is more. Um, you want your gore to serve the story, not the other way around. You know, your story is not about the gore. Your story is about people and it's about the problems that they're having, and these are pretty damn awful problems in a horror story, especially an extreme one. Uh, but it's not about surgical descriptions, clinical descriptions of, of mutilations and injuries and anything else that you might be writing. It's not about that. Um, people can go read that stuff in an autopsy report on the, the, the web if they want, or, you know, accident report. Um, it's about people, and it's about the problems that they're having. So the gore has to, to, to serve the story. So in my example, the person sawing off their own hand, if it's somebody who is really, really, really uncomfortable with pain, maybe any physical sensation, uh, and they have a fear of injury they have since they were a kid, um, maybe they've kept themselves from the point of never even having a broken limb. I've never had a broken limb, never broken anything, um, and I'm 57. So if you have a character like that, and they have to work up the urge to go ahead, the courage uh, to go ahead and saw through their um, saw through their hand, this is serving the story because it is a character dilemma, and it's a character conflict that they are rising to overcome. They're a different person afterwards, not just because they lose their hand. <laughs> They're a different person inside because of what they've done. So that gore serves the story. Um, and if the character goes like a little bit insane from it, maybe he carries his hand around as a, or she carries the hand around as a, as a trophy, as a badge of honor or something. Or maybe they're kind of deluded and think maybe they you know, get out of this and have a surgeon sew the hand back on at the hospital. Who knows what? Uh, and that shows you something about the character too, even though it's a pretty gross detail. Uh, you also want to think about the real effects of violence. Uh, what it does to people, not physically so much, although that's a big part of it. A lot of people in... Uh, stories they'll get like stabbed in the gut and then they just keep uh, especially movies they just keep going for like 20 minutes or something and it's like no if you're bleeding pretty bad you're not going to keep going um plus your body goes into shock all kinds of other stuff so you want to look up like uh, how people react to to injuries and being injured but there's also the emotional aspect of it people they are in shock uh, not physical shock necessarily although they probably are but mental shock they uh they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do next. They don't know, are they in denial of what's happened to them and they do try to keep going and bleed out and faint? Do they, uh, or they forget what they're doing and just try to save themselves? Uh, you know, they don't go try to help their friend who's in trouble. They just try to protect themselves and get to a hospital. Um, what does it do in the long term? If the, they get injured early on in the story and your story keeps on going, what does it do for them? mentally and emotionally. Just even functioning with a high level of pain can wear people down. Um, I mean, uh, adrenaline will help for a little while. Uh, adrenaline's a natural painkiller, but eventually it wears off. Uh, and then all that pain hits them, and how do they keep going? Um, there's a series that uh, I watch on Amazon Prime called I Shouldn't Have Survived. Um, and it's a, things like this are great to find out how people function with actual pain injuries, you know, they're, they're don't have any water for days, don't have any food for days, out in the desert for days. And the people, there are reenactments, but then they actually interview the people that went through this. And you get a chance to find out what it was like for them. Um, and you get a chance to find out mentally and emotionally uh, the kind of things that affected them and the choices they made during the course of trying to survive, which can be very different from person to person. So reality shows like that, um, crime shows too, like on Investigation Discovery, uh, uh, those are really good when you I mean, hear people talk about the effects. Um, and you want to go ahead and be responsible in how you deal with violence too. You don't want to glorify it. Uh, you don't want people thinking, this is great, I'd love to go out and hack off somebody's arm. Uh, almost no one would do that. You don't have to worry about that so much, but you contribute to the dehumanizing of people. Uh, and you know, you play into some of the worst stereotypes of what horror fiction can do. Uh, people who don't appreciate horror know much about horror, think that horror is, you know, made by sick minds and read by sick minds and everybody gets sicker because of it. Um, 
but you want to go ahead and write responsibly about it. Jack Ketchum is a master of this, if, if the absolute master of this. If you have never read a Jack Ketchum book, go read them. Um, you will see, you know, especially in his classic The Girl Next Door, which is based on a real, you know, true crime case. Uh, he fictionalizes it, but it's based on a real one. Um, and you will see the, you know, violence dealt with, you know, unsparingly. Uh, you know, he faces it head on, but he also faces it head on in terms of what it means for the characters and what it means for us, the reader, what it means for society. Uh, and it's not like you have to make your stories any great philosophical treatise or anything on violence and all that. But you do want to try to make sure that you're using it responsibly uh, to tell the best story that you can. And there's a reason why you use it beyond just the fact that, like I said earlier, you think it makes you edgy. Um, so those are my tips on uh, writing extreme horror. Uh, if you have any comments, you know, uh, different points of view about extreme horror, put them in the comments uh, below the video. Um, hope you check out my new book, too, see how I deal with violence. Uh, again, it's called Your Turn to Suffer. Here it is. So you can see if I practice what I preach when it comes to, to extreme content. And that's it. So see you later.